Well, thanks for coming again, everyone. I appreciate it. It's nice to see people again. Um, so the first thing I want to do is introduce Sylvie, who is the new town administrative administrator and community development administrator. And I forgot the word assistant in there, but she's been around for a little while and I've gotten to meet her a little bit and chat with her, but she's welcome to say hello and introduce herself um, now because it's great to have her here today as a guest. Hi everyone. Um, I think <laughs> I've met most of you on other meetings or in the office, um, but it's great to see you um, and I'm glad to uh, be here for this meeting. Um, I'm trying to uh, make my way around to all of the different meetings as they convene, so um, getting in the loop with everything that's going on. Um, so thanks for having me. Super. It's great to have you. All right. So then um, the next item I had on the agenda was to talk about the housing production plan and its status. And I believe now the status is confirmed that at the end of August, um, it will be presented to the select board and with any with hopefully that will be approved. Uh, but I wanted to give Megan the chance to talk about um how it moved from the housing committee to the planning committee over the summer and the couple of changes that were made to it just so that everyone's kind of up to date on how things are going sure yeah so we I thanks was Megan. checking the um my folders i think we last met in april uh, as a housing committee to talk about the plan um and then we kind of had a pretty good draft that was ready to go at that point at that point, then we switched over to the planning board because they were the first um, committee that we need to have a housing backup, for, especially for Sylvie's um, review. For a housing production plan to be approved by the state, you have to have meet all the requirements within the plan itself. Then you have to have a planning board and the select board approve the plan. And then you send it to the state, which is it used to be DHCD. Now it's the office that is formerly known as DHCD. Um, <laughs> and then they will approve it. Um, and then you will have an officially approved housing production plan. So where we are um, back in April, the housing committee met and had pretty much a final draft ready to go. We then, because the next step was to get the planning board approval, we then met a couple of times with the planning board to make sure they felt comfortable with the recommendations and the plan itself, since a fair number of the recommendations were planning board related in terms of zoning changes that could potentially help create more housing and affordable housing in the town. Um, so we met with the planning board. The, the plan has not really changed much from the drafts that the housing committee has seen. There have been a few small tweaks based on the planning board's recommendations. Um, those tweaks, I'll kind of give a quick outline here for, the, for you, but they really weren't too substantive. Um, there were a few extra resources added at the end for homeowners or seniors in town to get more information about how to um, have affordability programs, tax breaks, and to get uh, modifications to their homes for repairs or if they need accessibility. So that those extra resources were added to the plan. There were three um, recommendations, changes to recommendations. There are minor tweaks. One is to explore creating a mixed use district near transit, either near near Old State Road or Route 5 and 10. So, because um, right now it's not clear that there are clearly the only districts in which both commercial and residential can be allowed on the same, either the same site or um, really compatible with each other in a, like in a designed way. So this was a potential to explore that idea of creating a mixed use district. Aren't 5 and 10 and State Road the same road? Old State Road. Oh, okay. Um, then we were, they asked the, the cluster bylaw in town has density bonuses to allow people to build affordable housing. Um, so if they build affordable housing, they can get a few more units allowed, but no one has ever utilized that. So we wanted to, re they asked that a recommendation be added to review that bylaw to see if that needs to be tweaked to make it easier to use. And then another um, one last kind of one that I want to make sure I mentioned was that um, potentially waiving dimensional requirements 
for certain zoning districts yet to be identified if someone wants to build an affordable unit or unit for seniors. And that will be with so special permit and site plan review. So it'd still be guidance, but exploring how to make that work to allow it, um, a little more flexibility if someone wants to build affordable units or housing for seniors. So those are the kind of the three major changes that have happened since you've seen it. Um, they're just recommendations, nothing um, obviously you're holding to anything and they're just additional options that this housing plan then provides as recommendations. Um, so that hit, so the planning board with those changes approved the housing production plan on July 12th. So now the next step is to go to the select board. It's going to be at the end of August. I don't know if I know the, the final date yet, but it's 29th. Yeah. Okay. August 29th, the select board will review that um, plan and hopefully get their seat of approval and then we'll send it off to the state for their review. Any questions? And that process takes a couple of months, right, Megan? Yeah, it typically is a couple months. They're pretty backed up these days. Yeah. Okay. We just had, um, we just did the, a housing production plan for Orange. It took them about two months and they had a very small tweak. That was the only uh, change. And I've already made that change in your plan. It was just um, that you'd be open to Chapter 40B proposals. Um, and so hopefully we won't have any changes whatsoever. Great. Okay. So I wanted to just review, I don't know if people went through it. This is a really long plan. I decided to ask the town to print it for me and I went and picked it up. I didn't know if people, I am I work better when I have things, especially if I'm having a Zoom meeting, if I have things in front of me on paper still, I guess I'm anyway, old fashioned that way. But if people need it, I'm sure that they can also ask for the same thing if they want a, an actual hard copy of this. And then also, I I feel you can see the, the maps a lot better. I don't know if it's just me, but when I look at most of these maps on my computer, I, I really can't figure out where things are. So I'll just, I'll just offer that out for people. But I wanted to take a couple minutes and... Um, look at the different strategies and kind of talk about where we go from here. I'm going to see if I manage to leave that up and try to share the screen. Yeah, I did. Good. Okay. Can people see that? All right. Yep. Super. Yeah. Um, so I, for the time being, I feel like this is a, a big plan with a lot of detail. I may put a lot of work on it. And um, over time, I think we'll sort of talk about how we want to set up communication. You know, we have, you can see in the responsible groups, the first page or two full pages are planning board responsible items. And so we have grant from the planning board on the housing committee now, which is awesome. And so we can talk through how do we want to set up communication with the planning board um, about talking with the about these different items, or do we want to sort of let them lead their own way? I'm kind of hopeful that we can collaborate a little bit and talk about if there are one or two things to maybe tackle during this year. Um, but I wanted to sort of get people's opinion about them. And then I also wanted to really just highlight the ones that are around the housing committee so that we can kind of all just get them back in our minds. And as we start to actually move forward and talk about implementation, we can do some brainstorming and think about some ways that we can move some of these items forward. And so I'm going to, I just need to hide you guys because you're... <laughs> in the way when I'm trying to look at this too. Um, I'm gonna start here at the affordable housing creating created creation strategies section. And um, again, I'm kind of just gonna highlight some of these quickly. The first item is talking about working with the senior center on providing residents with information on housing. And um, they're, you know, work could work with the senior center group or with Valley neighbors um, and then in this next category, which I think is a higher priority is to promote development of new single affordable family homes in Waitley. Um, 
potentially working with RDI, which is the nonprofit wing of the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in Franklin County uh, that will do development for new housing and new apartments in Franklin County. Um, I think we as a group need to continue to try to identify potential sites, maybe see if we can pursue some specific issues with some of the places we've talked before and think about um, if any of those sites we can move forward, um, maybe to getting site control in the case of LaSalle Road, which is one of the sites we've talked about. Um, I think that might be a topic of a future meeting. Um, and then I think these other items kind of follow from things like that, working with any potential nonprofit or other area developers who may be interested um, in creating some housing. And um, th this is kind of along that same way. Catherine, I think if yes. I can step in here. Please, Fred. Uh, the select board in March authorized um, a study uh, for affordable housing at the DeMeo property. Can you screen share with me? Can you yeah, let me absolutely. Screen share? Yeah. Oh. Tell let me, me when. Yeah. Hey. Fred, for those of us who haven't been in Waitley all that crazy long, could you just remind me where that property is? That's the big vacant lot across from Zanoni's Auto Repair. Okay. All right. That the Snowmobile Club uses. The Snowmobile Club sign is there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So I have something that looks, I think you should be all set, Fred. Although I, I notice I have a pause icon and I don't want it there and I'm not sure okay, it will interfere. Right. But try to share. Um, I have to find my. Sure. Are we? Am I sharing now or not? No. Have... You typically need to make Fred a co-host. I did do that. Okay, hold on. Okay. And I allowed multiple. Yeah. Got it. And who do you think, who, what agency okay. is doing the study, Fred? What? What agency is doing the study? This was. Has done it. Do, do you have this up on the screen now? I see it yeah. now, yes. Uh, the company is VHB. Here's the list of, who's with the Massachusetts Housing Partnership. It's, Brian and I oh. got a presentation of this last week. There are a couple of tweaks that still have to be made. Uh, Sylvie, if you can send an email out at some point after this meeting with a link to this so that everyone can have it. Okay? Sure. Uh, and then I, I will cut through all of the things just to get down to the, it's all about the property and the wetlands issues and all of that. But there's, three concepts that they came up with again just this doesn't mean this is all that could be built there or anything but what is on the screen is for two three-story buildings with a total of 24 units concept two is a single three-story building with 12 units and concept three is sort of a townhouse arrangement also 12 units. Uh, and and there, there are some little tweaks that have to be made, or it's actually a little more information that we want, but it, it's a possibility for that site. So Fred, they think, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, um, could you summarize the wetlands issues? The, there is a stream that runs behind, at behind the property and actually through the property at the top of what you know the picture that you're seeing and there's a 100 the, the whole property is about 400 feet deep but there's about 100 feet of pure wetlands that is just 
not buildable. And then another 100 feet of environmentally sensitive land, which might there might be some building on, but for instance, you probably couldn't put septic on it, but you might be able to put something else on it. it it's not so clear now, from the study what, that's one of the things we want to get is the dimensions is how far back they're saying can be built. Right. So should I, is it safe to assume that the wetlands are in the back and the closer the buildings are to the road, the less they would be disturbing that? Yes, yes. The the wetlands, the the stream runs, as I said, if you look at the picture that's up now, back sort of through the trees that are at the top of the picture and runs from right from left to right. Um if I may, uh, we le did le get... left left is north, right is south on this yeah. picture. Um we did get an updated uh version with the um with the uh, site concepts that show precisely where the the buildings align with the with the wetland area, so that's the one I'll be sending out later. Good, thank Great. you. Good. I I haven't seen that yet, so yeah, I'd like to see that too. Because yeah, uh, there there are other possibilities now for the site. And now that we're sur we've had it surveyed and have more of an idea of exactly how much is buildable, because that was part of the problem. It's a a good sized site, but a lot, lot of it simply can't be built on. Um, there's and, an old and... septic system which can't be used. It's just, it's ancient and. Uh... Right. So, is this assuming that it's going to perk and that in that front area, maybe they're going to have. It, the... it, it depends. In, in this yeah. concept, I believe that the set, let me see what they say. The septic is under the landscape. So, that yeah, septic yep. would be right here. There. Yeah. In this concept, the septic is over on the right side. In this concept, the septic is under the the driveway. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Doable, but more expensive and more potential problems if there are problems with the septic system. Every That's small scale little development in my prior job that had a septic system had numerous issues regularly for many different types of reasons. And I right, would but, say that 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 makes this fairly, a maybe a little bit too much, too complicated for a project, but, right. but we'll see, yeah. Again, the, the septic is here under the front and the buildings are at the back because you can put some of the structure at the back, but you couldn't put the septic back there. You couldn't move these both buildings up to put the septic in the back because that's too close to the the watershed yeah so it, it it's not an easy property to deal with but there are possibilities right okay that, that's all i want to let you know is that this existed well and... it's great to know that it existed okay, um so you, you you can take the screen back now all right you can hit if you could say stop sharing okay i just have to find the right yep down at the bottom. Yeah. I do sure. have a quick question for you, Fred. It's safe to yep. assume that these concepts were developed to be conformant to to work within existing zoning bylaws. Yeah. Now there always may be uh, some uh, some bypasses that may be made through you know, 40B or for other uh, special permits, you know, to to get around strict wetlands issues. Um, it, it depends on what the use of the building is, you know, if it's affordable, how many units are affordable. And that's right. it. this is strictly a concept thing when it didn't really get into the specifics of how these might be built or how they might even be financed. Right. You know, okay. Whether there's anyone who would be willing to finance these units, but these are just examples of what might be possible there. Right. I'm surprised after our initial, it's great that you had someone with experience on the site reviewing it because when we were looking at the 
square feet that we right. thought would be buildable. We thought it was a lot less than that. Um, well, that's one of the reasons I asked them to, that I wanted to get a copy of that with dimensions so that we we can look at them instead of just look at those pictures and say, oh, there are trees back there. You know, how far from the road are those trees? Right. Um, can I just say there, there was a, a preliminary, I could call it assessment of, of the of the lot and the wetlands by by this committee oh five, six years ago, before you joined the committee, Fred, and there was two other members on the committee. We went out, looked at the site, mm -hmm. identified where where the wetlands were. We coordinated with Conservation Commission, got their input and all, and developed a, I call it a preliminary or draft uh, map of of what it looked like for wetlands and what was what was available for for housing. I would hope that uh, Sylvia has seen that. Of course, it's not it's not final. It, it was a preliminary one, and and I think the back then the the housing committee had some contact with I think it was Habitat for Humanity uh the point Northampton and I think they came in looked at the site and I guess didn't uh offer anything favorable for for future development I guess I, I put it that way they weren't they said the site costs would be substantially it would be cost prohibitive to develop one house and they really weren't interested in developing more than one house at any one site. Right. That, that was right. there. I think th this shows us that it might be developable for multiple units. Right. Again, whether it's uh, feasible economically, I have no idea what the construction cost would be. The 24 unit two building site would probably be the most cost effective, but it's also visually the most intrusive. Um. And it's a big change all at once, 24 units of right. rental housing in our community. Right. So um, the townhouses would probably be the least intrusive and the most expensive to build because it's most the most separate buildings. Right. The the uh the conservation, I don't know if it's conservation commission or building inspector is gonna it is gonna be a major concern or I have a concern about the, the septic on the site. I mean, if you're putting uh, multi-units on there, you need a certain size of septic uh, installation. Oh, yeah, that, that was all, you, Fred, when you look at the report, you'll see that was all taken What's into that? account. That's why the septic systems are towards state, either towards State Road on two of the examples or on the south side of the property in the third. Right, in the third, yeah. Well, well away from the... Uh, the boundary line yeah. okay and you know it, and when anything gets developed it'll probably have to be resurveyed because with the nature of waterways they move so what is 200 feet this year may not you know maybe 198 feet next year um you know so there has to be a point when, in time once it is surveyed it's good for a certain number of years like five or ten so you don't okay. have to wait a year. Okay. okay but uh you know, we, we will have to have that survey done, you know, official survey done at some point to to set those guidelines. Sure. Well, thanks for sharing that uh, fresh, recent information okay. with us. Yeah, I think Sylvie just sent the link to it, so you can all look Super. at it. Oh, that's great. If I start looking, I'll get really distracted. So I'm going to um, choose to do that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can have fun with that later, yes. I will have fun with that later, absolutely. So thanks for sending, and it'll probably inspire me to send lots of in-between meeting emails or something that I... Yeah, and, and it's brand new. You'll see it's dated, I think, July right. 12th, and we just... And... Did you get... Was that what was on the agenda? Was it on last Tuesday's select board? No, no, it was, oh. hasn't even been on the select board agenda yet. It just, got it, uh, okay. We got it up from them on July 12th, Brian and I, last week he had been away right. had a, a zoom meeting with the people who did and they ran through it with us right okay um great okay I back, think, back to business 
back to business. Right. So, I mean, obviously this puts like of the two sites we kind of had been looking at and talking about Megan, mm -hmm. like this site has now got, and obviously it's already time to own the other site that I talk about sometimes on LaSalle road. We don't have site control. We know that it's in the aquifer protection district. I don't know exactly what that means in terms of where things can and can't be located and what can and can't be located. So that's like a lot further down, but I really didn't expect to see more than three or four units available on this property from what we had done back. And I'm also not experienced in the design part of this, right? I know a lot about the financing and the application process and like the early implementation efforts i do not know a lot about the actual hands-on stuff so well i i, I um, saw in this report there was mention of one uh organization that does rehab of existing you know dilapidated houses and i think the sal drive could qualify for that because indeed. one or both of the houses on properties there are certainly in need of severe rehabilitation yeah. So that yeah, well, well and that could be a, a, a one, separate track. It's trap. not even right, right. You know, rather That's than right. developing for multiple there are, units, try to rehabilitate. Yep. Yeah, there are funds available for blighted properties as well. Um that Megan and I I think and, we've and already so, and talked certainly about. that first one on yeah. the Sal Drive is blighted. You can agree on that. Indeed. And unfortunately, I won't say that yet. I know, but, yes. but and the know, other I unit there's also a problem for the people who haven't been on the housing committee that long of even locating the owners of one of the property of that property that we have a name but have never been able to get them to respond right right and i think they've been paying their taxes or at least they had as of when i kind of went on there's no indication they haven't before right yeah Okay, so we can think about that another day. What I really kind of wanted to do today was sort of like have this meeting serve a bit as a re as like a a restart and sort of a let's get started. I had to take a leave at the beginning of COVID, and um, you know, this is sort of me. Like I let Megan take control for the mm -hmm. whole last year. I'm very grateful for that, and we have this product of the housing production plan. So. I think a lot of great things have happened over the last year that give us a bit of a guidebook to kind of keep, to start moving and to keep, get meeting again. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm hopeful we can sort of look at some of these next steps and meet and talk next month. Um, I'm just going to throw in there that another item I said on the agenda and then didn't do was attach the actual pages, the Community Preservation Committee plan. Um, the Community Preservation Committee has sections on, let me take a step back for anyone who might not understand what the Community Preservation Committee is. Um, the Community Preservation um, tax is assessed on sales, deed transfers and things like that. And we collect a 3% tax on all that throughout the course of the year. And uh, now each year we we collect about $90,000, a little less or a little more depending um, in income. And the state has been matching us and almost every year since the inception of the tax, we've gotten a 100% match, which means that in each year, the town of Waitley gets about $180,000, often more. I think last year we we're around 190,000 towards eligible projects. 10% of those projects are required to be housing projects, affordable housing projects, and we have not done any. So we have a little bit of money sort of pooled up. 10%, you know, is maybe $18,000 a year. So we've got a little bit of money that's been pooling up over the years um, that we can use towards a project. We can also go to the committee um, to ask for more than that. And because I'm the housing rep on that committee, I've been sort of saying for years, like once we get something, we'll be actually asking for more money than we have because housing is expensive. So they're aware. <laughs> and um, we just haven't had any project that's been close at this point. But um, 
along with that every year, every fall, we've been reviewing the plan. And a thing that I feel a bit guilty of is that last year, I had just, I kind of got pulled out of my leave to think about that. And then I worked on with another member on updating the housing committee um, priorities section all by myself. And I, I just didn't have the bandwidth to have a meeting and they wanted it done post haste. And so I think I, what I'd like to do at the next meeting is hopefully have people take a quick look at it in light of our new housing production plan and sort of take a stab at us, like pulling together a new section of priorities for the town. Um, it might not mean that there are that many changes, to be honest, because I feel like from the beginning, we've said as a group, sort of the same broad statements about fitting in with the character of town and trying to get more housing. So we'll see, but I, I just wanted to throw that out there. But um, in part in the part about sort of kickstarting the meetings, again, what I wanted to do too was talk about trying to assign roles and get a little bit of group participation in um, the meetings. And um, for a while I was setting the agenda, posting the agenda, taking the minutes, like I was doing all the steps and um, I don't feel even capable any longer of doing that and I'd like to sort of try to share the load because it was really um a lot and so there's a few different things besides just what happens within the context of this meeting and getting minutes taken um there's two sort of other committee things happening at this point one that's regular and one that's temporary and so I feel willing to sort of share work of the housing committee in any way that people are willing to participate. One of the things I've been doing on and off for the last, I think it's seven years old um, or so, maybe not quite that long, Megan, the the um, small town quarterly housing, they have a housing meeting where they talk about a variety of issues, not just housing development, but also sort of what's going on with the housing crisis. Um, Oftentimes, one one of the more recent meetings, I feel like we talked about how difficult it's been to find a unit of housing in Greenfield and for people who are in need of affordable housing, all the sort of different resources that can be given to people to try to support them. And so it, it also is really interesting to see what other towns have been doing. Um, I don't know, Megan, if you want to share any more about that, but I'd love to see if anyone wanted to start trying to attend those meetings quarterly. Um, it's a great way too to just hear about what's happening in other communities. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we meet on a, a is it quarterly or bi-monthly? It's quarterly now, I feel quarterly, like. Quarterly, um, yep. And we just met in Turner's Falls. We actually, in, it's usually online Zoom, but we did do a field trip in Turner's Falls last two, three weeks ago to kind of look at the different results of different zoning changes that the town has done recently. So we visited the ADU. Um, we looked at some um, Habitat for Humanity was there to talk about a project that they are starting on a lot there, and the financing and stuff behind it, what it took to get the ADUs passed and how that's being used. Um, and then I was just taught, we have a meeting tomorrow with someone from Cape Cod. We're hoping to bring them um, onto a Zoom, the oh. next Zoom meeting to talk about they have an ADU assistance program in which you, people can get grants uh, to help provide, to help with a septic issue for ADUs, which is definitely an issue for us because if a lot of us are gonna be having ADUs, um, we will have to be doing on septic and our septic's prepared and we'll probably have to upgrade them. So we, so basically we take lessons learned from different areas in the, the state and outside. We've got people coming from Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, that kind of have similar populations and constraints like we have. And we get together and talk about issues and how it's working, how it's not working, things like that. And it's been very, very helpful. Yeah, it's it's a neat committee. Um, and the other thing that's going on that I sort of already signed myself up for when I was asked, but I wanted to throw it out for anyone else. I don't know exactly how the steering committee is going to work for the Waitley master plan, but I know that Megan, so I'm like taking advantage of having her at the meeting tonight, <laughs> is sort of going to um, facilitate an update for the master plan for the town of Waitley, if anyone doesn't already know this. And um, 
people have been invited to sort of try to come as a group for maybe four to five meetings throughout the year. Um, and that's something I'm hoping I'll be available to participate in, but I know I really have trouble with meetings, especially during the school year in this four to seven time frame, because I'm doing a lot of picking up and dropping off of couple school age children. And so we'll see how well mm -hmm. I can do with all this attendance that I say I'm going to have. But um, I wanted to throw those things out there and just see if anyone had any other thoughts. I'd um, at a lot of the meetings that I've been to in the past that have been successful, we've had someone also facilitate the meetings so that we stay um, on time. And for people who are really good at keeping people to the task, it would be great if someone wants to sort of volunteer for that role and keep us going. I know that um, in our housing group in the past, we've tended to end up on topics that are very housing related and not necessarily what we planned on talking about an example of which is the great thing that fred showed us which i'm super happy about so don't think i'm like <laughs> saying it in a bad way tonight but i know in the past we've um gone off topic a bit and so i think we would have some benefit if anyone you know would be willing to to play that role but i just wanted to throw out there if people were um feeling like they would be interested in attending either of these other meetings, this in particular, the small town um, community housing meetings or um, taking minutes for the next, you know, even sharing and taking minutes every other meeting or something, I'd be really um, grateful to get a little support. So people can think about it if they don't wanna talk about it right now too. Um, Oh, I'll I just ask a question about um, sure. this is directed really at Sylvie. Um, what's the understanding of your role in committees like this, right? And like you, I don't know if I heard a hint like you're checking in in meetings, but you're not necessarily coming to every meeting. So I guess I want to know, and this is sort of like connecting what Catherine just said, like, can we expect you to play? any kind of role in this committee, or do you really just, your role is just defined as you're an observer? Um, well, my, um, I mean, I guess uh, that's something I'll probably need to clarify a little bit when it becomes more apparent what the level of need is from various groups, um, because um, it could become difficult to balance um, uh, all of the committee's needs. Um, so I guess that's something I need to think about a little bit and talk about with Brian in terms of what makes sense uh, for commitment for um, any particular um, group that's meeting up. Um, I'm open to ideas. So and also if there's a particular need, um, I think that that's something that um, or if there's something in particular that you want um, to have me uh, a part of a uh, particular project or ideas or, or wanting to find resources for something um, that would be good for me to know about. And um, so well, I guess my understanding was that while I may not be attending each and every meeting for each group, um, if there's something, um, if there's some information that, that you'd like to share with me and have uh, me um, be working on with you, you can let me know and then I'll check in with folks also and just see, you know, what's on the agenda and um, if it's something that I should attend. Um, but in terms of uh, like supporting the group, um, I'll have to um, figure that out a little bit um, when I see what the need is overall. Brian, I think my, my understanding of Sylvie's job is support staff, not as, as a member of the committee okay, right. to do you know, to be secretary for the committee or to do, go to other meetings. But if we need research on laws or right, you know, and running, to running state down. agencies or things yeah. like yeah. that, that that's the role. So let me so, just sort of just to bring it to a, a point of focus, like when it comes to taking minutes, the I know the planning board, we pay somebody, we have a clerk to do that work. Uh, and that's we get a we have a small budget from the town to pay that. I don't know what the housing committee might have. Um, I don't know whether um, 
I mean, that's a form of staff support. Now, whether Sylvie could take minutes for us is an open question, or whether the housing committee should try to hire somebody if we have any money, or the reason I bring this up, why it's useful for an a all volunteer committee to have other people doing certain kinds of you know, um, administrative work, it allows the volunteers like ourselves to focus on some higher order things. Like if I were to volunteer to take minutes and write minutes and circulate minutes for this committee, that comes out of whatever, you know, discretionary time I have, which is limited. So it might be helpful if we could either pay a clerk to take minutes to solve that one problem or if by virtue of having a community development coordinator on staff providing support to committees depending on need. And I don't know if this is our highest level of need for Sylvie. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Right. But I, I think the difference between this committee and planning and zoning is that planning and zoning are quasi-judicial and require more uh, professional or uh, you know, Thorough. legally binding minutes okay. than a volunteer committee, which has no uh, action you know, enforcing you know, any sort of authority aside from recommendation. I, I think that that's where the difference in the staffing comes in. That the, so there's, the a secretary, is there's a secretary for planning because that makes sense. if it goes to a judicial proceeding to challenge it, it has you know, that record has to be there. So maybe we don't need to take particularly extensive minutes, you know, right. we virtually get transcriptions for planning board meetings, which right. is probably above and beyond anyway, but. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the, the quality of the documentation of the meeting is different yeah, here sure. than it would be on zoning or planning. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good clarification, Fred. Um, but to Brant's point, I know that when I was doing it on a regular basis, I. I lost my ability to effectively participate and hold my thought when I had to consistently stop to write or type things. Right. And I tried it both ways. I could not do it Zoom and typing at all. And I did not, although again, I don't think, I think because the minutes don't need to be much, maybe it's not the end of the world, but it did impact my, yeah. how I felt about participating for sure. Um, but it's still something to think about. All right. If you're unable to have a clerk for this purpose, um, I think that, I mean, just generally speaking in any um, meetings that I've participated in professionally, there's, uh, you you can just set up sort of like a, a plan where one person's a minute, to, uh, one person's taking minutes, one person's facilitating, and you rotate both of those roles so that no one person is doing them at the same time and that everybody shares the burden of doing those um, tasks. I think it right. might be a simple enough solution. Right. Okay. Yeah. That might be the best solution in the short term. Because um, I think I you're think so. right on, Kate, Catherine, that uh, if when I'm in a note taking, mode it's i'm focusing on listening and getting the notes right versus sort of engaging in the content and being a participant in the conversation so it's hard to balance to, to do both well right well, it does help now if we have the meetings on zoom or yeah. and recorded whoever's doing the minutes can do it from the recording after yeah. the fact right. rather than at the time Yeah, I suppose that's true, too. Um, all right, great. So I'll sort of take all that into consideration. And the big thing that I am hoping to avoid doing again is a, another doodle or whatever. But we used to have meetings on the, I have to now look at a calendar to get this right. I feel like we were doing the first Wednesdays of every month to kind of accommodate people's schedules. And we've been starting at five. And so I wanted to survey people who are here about potentially having meetings that start either earlier or later, because I'm certain for the next 
until my child has a car, this will be at least six months and a license <laughs> that I'll be picking him up every day after school at 530. Like when he's done with his job, he has an after school job. I, I can't re really re readily rely on anyone else. My only other driver person is also has a schedule that's kind of out of their control. So just that needs to be my job. So either if we have a meeting at five o'clock, I'm done at 515, or we have a meeting at four, 430, or starting at six or something. And so I just wanted to check in with the attendees today who will regularly be attending meetings and see, get people's thoughts on availability for those evening times, and then to check on if Wednesday is an actual reasonable day or not for people. The, the first Wednesday is what we were doing. I'm totally open to changing. I mean, I could start with an initial proposal of saying a four o'clock meeting um, on the first Wednesday, but I'm perfectly happy to try to accommodate everybody else's schedules and try to find something that works that's regular for people. I don't know who's working and who's going to have constraints around that. I'm happy to do it at six o'clock instead, but maybe if we could just go around and get a couple sentences from people who has their microphone on Fred and Fred, Fred Orlowski, why don't you go first? Yeah. The first Wednesday is fine for me. And, and I guess I would suggest either a four o'clock or a six o'clock meeting. Either either one pick, I guess. In, in between, it, it's an odd time, five or six, 5.30 is too confusing, and four or six, so. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm fine with Wednesday. I think the later meeting would probably be better because, you know, especially if we get into having a project, a four o'clock meeting where you have to be out by 5.15 yeah. to do pickup is... Yeah, that is a could, good could be setting things, making things tight. Right, right. Alternatively, it gives us a nice hard cutoff time, <laughs> but I totally get it. And I know we have had some meetings that went on even when we didn't have projects, right? right that were quite long. So I, I think saying that I any meeting is only going to be an hour and a quarter is very limiting. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Brant, I see you're on. Um, I was... I think first Wednesdays is fine. I've been looking at the Waitley town calendar and it doesn't seem to conflict with any other recurring meetings. I think Wednesdays is a good choice. I'm pretty flexible. Um, and, you know, four is fine. Six is fine. I mean, I could do seven. Um, yeah, I teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, but I'll be prepped for Thursday classes. So it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Thanks. Monty? Yeah, um, Wednesday's fine for me, first Wednesday. Um, Great. I can do four or six, though. I get out of work in Greenfield at 3.30, so I would have to really scoot home. You rush for four. I got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah so I, I actually okay. just stayed at work for this one. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so six is better for me, but I could manage four. Okay. Okay. And so... Grant, was it you that said seven? I, I remember years ago having a seven o'clock meeting and this was when my kids were babies and having to leave those meetings to put them to sleep. But for me, that's no longer an issue. I don't think anybody else has that going on either in this group, but is seven also something that might work? Seven works for me. You know, the later it gets, you know, it's closer to my bedtime. Right? Yeah. No, I, I drink tea. So, you know, I, I really just put seven out there, not as necessarily a preference. If six, I think it sounds yeah. like we're trending away from four, which is. Five. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think six maybe is. And then if you know. How about we compromise at 630? Let people have a chance to eat a bite of dinner, but it doesn't get too yeah. late. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's fine, too. Okay. Yeah. And then hopefully it gives all of us a good, a good two hours of awake time before. <laughs> So you might want to agree that really 6 30 to 8 is the window and that's that's the ideal really window needed, but, you know go beyond eight the quality yeah. of the dialogue might drop off after that yeah certainly true. mine would yeah, yeah the earlier right. it is the smarter i am i completely get it i'm right there um i think let's try the 6 30 um 
I think that is a great way to start. And then to Fred's point, if we start to where we're getting an actual project going, and we may need to be meeting either more regularly or for longer, we can try bumping it up to six and see if that's okay. Um, yeah. So the first meeting Wait. would be on Wednesday, September 6th, it's starting at 6.30 via Zoom. You got it. Okay. That's right. And I'm guessing I'll be Brian again on that day, unless we figure out a different system. All right. So I think that's all I have for tonight. Does anyone have anything else that they want to bring up? Fred? Yes. Uh, I have, I guess, some concern and something that you may need to think about the, the role of this committee. Uh, especially since, you know, the, the select board has done a feasibility study to my own property. I, I, I get that it, it was town property. So it's something that we're looking at reusing and it appears the recommendations are towards housing as an option. Uh, I don't think this committee had any, any knowledge that that was even going on. And, no, and no, I guess it's if the, me. If if the select board is going to pursue that in, in any fashion or make it public or available or whatever, then what is the role of this committee? Are, are we are we can we weigh in on that and say we want to look at other locations at the same time? Or are they going to overrule us and say, well, we did a study and they said we could do it there? So uh, we're just going to be that, that our was strict, it was strictly at, a feasibility study. Is you know. Was that even an option to, you know, what were the options on that property? The board, we haven't taken any votes or any action to commit to that course right. of action. There's at least one other possible use for that land that has nothing to do with housing. Um, so it, it was really just to determine what our, what some of the alternatives were. It was not to preempt this committee in any way. No, but but and, once you, if housing is, is the most logical option, then I, I think this committee should be involved in, in, in that. And it will well, be. And, yeah. and, and so far we haven't been, I guess that's my, that's my concern. I'm not faulting the select board for doing it. I think it's good to look at options, but if our role is to look at housing and promote housing, and I think we're only going to get one chance to do something good I, in town. And and where is that location going to be? I think this, we, we didn't we didn't know what the, that we, wherever we were is. actually surprised at the quality of the options. We did not know they could have come back and said no housing is going to work on this site. We had uh, no we didn't know. Okay, That's, it was a feasibility study. Just you know, is this an option? And they came back and said yes. If they come back and said no, then the housing committee wouldn't have had anything to do with it okay, because but, it would not have been a viable housing site. But some of this has already been discussed at, at other meetings with the housing committee and also with the select board. And the select board keeps changing. You know, great, we got violent, we got elected officials on there. Some of them weren't aware of what's happening in the past. And if it's the first time seeing this, say, oh, great, let's do this without knowledge of, of prior involvement of this committee that had some some activity going on for that site it, and other sites i, I think i i can assure you if this committee this committee would if housing is an option that gets pursued this committee will be a integral part of that process there will be a lot of community involvement because if you looked at those drawings they're not there's going to be some opposition to you know they're they're big structures and we're not just going to come in and get a select board and plop them down and say this is what we're doing uh the housing committee will be a you know it's not technically lead agency but we'll have a very major role in whatever it is we do but this study was simply say 
is housing an option on that site? That's yeah. all it was. Okay. And that's they came great. back with some possible plans. Okay. That, that's great what you propose. And just make sure the other members are aware of your concerns, your comments, um, I guess. Great if you're going to involve this committee. Okay. No, I, as you know, I can't talk to them outside of the meeting. We haven't, and aside from okay. commissioning this, we haven't even talked about it right. okay. in a meeting yet. So, Fred Barron, is it, yeah. am I fair in, in assuming that the housing committee exists and was created by the select board. Yeah. So we, in some sense, serve at the pleasure of the it's select a, board. It's an advisory committee for the select board. That's right. And thus, I think, picking up on Fred Orlowski's point, mm -hmm. it would be kind of unwise <laughs> and maybe counterproductive were the select board to pursue housing-related activities in town without you know, working collaboratively with the housing committee. I think it would just be a reasonable expectation. I don't well, think this is a criticism. And right that, that would be my expectation too, as I That's just fair. said to Fred. Yeah. This, this study might not have even been housing related if it came back and said, you can't build housing. You know, right. There's and no just viable to, housing there. And just to kind of take that point a little bit further, since I represent the planning board here, mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely for this committee to expect that the planning board will independently go off based on the housing production plan and just start just cogitating over what they want to do without right. it being a fundamentally collaborative process with the housing committee. And I've already right. said this to Kate that I don't, it feels to me like the housing committee needs to look at the housing production plan and the recommendations. And we, this group needs to come up with a set of priorities and strategies. And then, you know, for example, if something floats to the top for this committee about bylaw revisions that need to be worked up by the planning board, that would be something where I would be the advocate from this committee to right. the planning board with help from the rest of you. So this would be the vision. And then if the select board decides to act pick up on these recommendations or pursue them further related to the DeMeo property, you would again sort of come back and work with this committee to make that happen. Yeah, no, it it, it all has to be collaborative because right. for the financing, either the housing committee or the housing trust controls money, which has right. to be right. dealt with. Uh, and CPC controls money, which no doubt we will want to ask for to supplement that so it, it's all going to be a there's no one group or one board that you know whether it's select board or planning or zoning for any special permits that might be required that's going to run off and on its own and do anything they can't can i just ask maybe one more question picking up on fred orlowski's and this is for you fred baron yep. do you believe because it was a slight concern when I heard that this committee was somewhat unaware that this study of housing options was commissioned. I mean, there could be good reasons for that. So, you know, let's put that in the past. But are you aware of any other housing related initiatives? No. Okay. That the select board. No. So, does that mean nothing else has happened with the Blue School over the last few months? Sorry, th there is one other potential thing, and that's Center School. Uh, we put out, a, an R, I don't know, it was an RFP or some other initial RF something, uh, for it as a, as the town leasing it. We got no responses to that. Uh, we just got something back from the historical commission, essentially saying that they are okay with us looking for a potential sale option. So we're working on an RFP, which will could have housing elements included in it. We don't have the RFP is not completed or you know, issued yet. Um, and we don't know what proposals would come back from that. Mm -hmm. But it is possible we would if we send out an RFP that there will be proposals that include housing. Okay. But we again 
have no idea what they are. There's nothing to submit to this committee because we don't have any proposals in hand. And will sure. it make sense? I'm sorry to keep cutting you off, Fred. I'll shut up. I That's okay. Just let me ask this one thing. Um, with regard to that potential future RFP for the center school, to the extent that that RFP may make explicit mention of you know, calls for housing related options, would this committee have the opportunity to look at a draft of the RFP before it goes out, just in case we have any suggestions for language in the RFP? Uh, I think Sylvie would be the liaison with that and make sure that Brian sent a copy to okay. his committee. That'd be my request, yeah, good. I feel a little bit like what I might want to start adding, and Fred, I'll be quick, I'm sorry, I know you're ready to get in again, um, is maybe an update. I can't keep, I know that for a number of months and or years in the case of just the housing committee, I've been out of the loop, but um, if we're at the point where there's some activity, I really feel like we need to establish a uh, some sort of a communication and feedback loop so that we are, this isn't the first item I know that was going on around housing that that didn't make it to our attention yeah. that I think should have. So maybe, Fred, if you can try to keep in mind that I'll be asking you for like the monthly yeah. update or something now that we're going to be meeting again, so that- well, part, I think part, part have... of the problem was that the housing committee wasn't meeting- That's right. No, it's, which, which is fine. And that's what I'm February saying. February like, of 2020. <laughs> right. Yep. So that for the last couple of years, that has certainly been a way, a place where there wouldn't be a convenient or easy way to keep us in the loop. But yeah, I think going forward. Um, yeah. I mean, if when, when things start going, but again, you know, with this DeMeo thing, it was only now in the last two weeks has it become housing related because they have something. Yep. They got it. We, we were okay. anticipate them anticipating them coming back with far less robust housing options. We didn't think that it was going to work on that property. They, yeah, I they, I still feel like I need to stand with the picture in the parking lot because right. I'm anyway. Uh, okay. Okay. So I, Fred, Fred Olasky. Yeah, we'll let you let you speak and, and then I'll try to do a missive for next month. Gather is this? Are you looking for uh, recommendations from this committee on the priorities in table what twenty seven? What I would like people to do. So what I was going to say as wrap up. One of you know one of the things I mentioned, which I now may like bump to the second month, was getting this community preservation committee priority updated um, as as an agenda topic. But maybe what I want to do instead is make sure that. Well, in addition, I wanted to have people take a look at that grid that starts on page 89. Um, think about what they think about those priorities overall. And we'll have a discussion about them, I think, at our next meeting. And we can either take recommendations and make votes, or we can just have a communication through grant to the planning board about what falls into the planning board's jurisdiction around those meetings. So that'll be, I think, the um, biggest piece of our agenda. But I'll also want to have some kind of an update from Fred Barron or from Sylvie, like depending on how much activity happens in the next month or less than a month, really, right, um, regarding this new proposal. And my suspicion is I'm going to be printing it out and I'm going to send Sylvie and probably I'll copy maybe Megan and Fred a million questions and uh hopefully not a million but um just to see like to so that by it by the time the next meeting happens we can have it a little bit flushed out and have some more information to share it just just at a full disclosure mm -hmm. at the same time that this uh study was out being done before we even got it back the select board approved another consultant to do studies for potential locations for a new highway garage, which includes that site as well. Right. So that was that I had heard of. Right. So it, it, it wasn't just that we were looking right. at this. It was 
we have a piece of town property and we were looking yep. at the various alternatives. What can we do with it? Right. And this piece of property could still be determined to be the best site of the highway garage. It could has possibly. That, right. that and, hasn't come. At, the, at that point, we have to go then turn to the, you know, have public meetings and public hearings and determine what the town wants. Do Would they prefer that? You know, what are the options? What are the costs? What are the possibilities of getting them built? And then we have to make a determination of which, as a board, which way, because yep. we can't go down both paths at the same time. Right. Nor would, yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. And so, you know, at that point, we'd have theoretically, you know, if we did not have another viable site for a highway garage and that was the best site, then we've got to make a determination of what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't keeping a, a housing option from this committee. It was simply determining. No, you're looking at uh, some of the, on all the towns in the region have sites that maybe schools that are being reused, right? Like in Williamsburg right. as right. anyway. Yeah, I get it. All the towns have lots of vacant land the some that they own some that they don't and people are looking for the best reuse and the best and, sites and, and this property in particular with its environmental issues we just yes. didn't know what was possible there right yeah if i I'm, may i want yeah. to respond to, to fred orlowski fred asked is is this committee the housing committee expected to come up with priorities over the various options presented in table 27 in the housing production plan. And speaking from the perspective of the planning board and the things listed as duties of the, or where the planning board is responsible, I think the question, the answer to Fred's question is emphatically yes. The planning board, just so for everyone on this right. call tonight understands, there's a bunch of items in this housing production plan where the planning board is listed as a responsible group. When I make, sure everyone understands that the planning board did not agree or make any promises that any of those would be carried out. The right. status of this report of sort of ideas or things for the, the way the planning board understood the items in this table as they're like things worth pursuing that will then be subject to, you know, you might say the whims of the planning board and whether there's advocacy and so on and so forth from this committee and elsewhere. And there's so many things listed in this table for the planning board to do. And the planning board can barely get one or two of these things done in any given year, much less, I don't know, two pages worth. Right. So, I'm really absolutely. glad you're bringing that up because I know we've so, said it a number of times. Right. Like, I just right. want to make sure everyone understands that this committee has to start by looking at all those things and going through a cognitive process for us to figure out what do we think are the biggest bangs for the buck? What do we most want the planning board to work on in the next one, two, or three years? Because you're not going to get them all, and you may get none of them, honestly, because also the wild card is these things have to come before town meeting and get approved, and that could be shot down, right? So... Right. There's a lot to consider. Those items might even take more discussion time than the action items regarding the housing committee rec um, priorities. Um, in fact, depending on what people's opinions are about some of them. But there are a lot of really good ideas in there to work with, which, which is nice. So at least I think we, at least in my opinion, I think we have a great starting point for getting some direction. And even if we provide the planning committee with a menu and say, you, you know, you guys can go with what you feel is easier, right? I, I, maybe that's, or, or what you feel is the most palatable, you know, maybe that'll work out, but that will be um, certainly a chunk of the next meeting. That's my intent. And if we get to the CPC stuff, we get to it. Can I just um, make, a make a suggestion on, on Looking at table 27, which I, I did, and, and there's a lot of similarities in the wording and description. Would it be helpful to, to prioritize, not prioritize, but uh, identify with letters or numbers or something, each one in the table? So when we talk about it, we know we're talking about A or C or, or D1 and D2 is our priority. 
without focusing on the exact wording because a lot of the words are the same in many of them. Yeah. That's I a great for, point. For, for yeah, yeah you're, that's true. Megan, it's your baby. Do you feel like you could um, identify like a way to sort of outline them or? Yes, I love organization. I will do that. I mean, if, it's just like, <laughs> if each strategy had a number, you know, S1, S2, S3, mm -hmm. and each option had O1, you know, S1 dash O1 would be permit all types of accessory units, et cetera. Love it. Anyway, great point, Fred. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. All right. I know, I know we want to end this meeting and I, as much as others want to do that too, but I'll say if one of the things I've done for the planning board is help set up and curate a, um, an online shared document structure. We do it using Microsoft OneDrive that's supported by the town um, at no cost. takes a little, you know, I can help people who have, you know, computers and want to access shared documents and shared files. It, it just minimizes the amount of emails running around and people having to search folders of past emails for documents that got shipped around as attachments. So if people think the work of this committee would be enhanced by you know, getting that sort of thing set up, then I can do that work with the town and provide that kind of IT support for this committee. That's lovely. Um, I love shared drives and yes, I love shared drives and I will probably follow up with you maybe to ask about that. Yeah, Cause I think yeah. things there are in options. addition, in addition to the housing, the HPP, um, I used to walk around and bring to every housing committee meeting, my binder, which had some of MHPs printed out, you know, guidance for this and guidance for that. And so um, having not only the not printed, but the most current ones, right, it's easily accessible would be really useful. So um, I would love that. Jump in. I'm sure you guys are probably aware, but for, for open meeting law, not to have drafts or comment any, any versions of what you comment on in that shared folder, because that could be a violation of open meeting. Well, that, that's if that's not posted by the meeting. Right. You know, we, we have an extensive folder structure of documents within the planning board, but everything we discuss at public meetings is posted publicly. Right. Yeah. So if we basically, so you use it, Brant, for things that you have stored sort of as reference, like if people want to go back to the so-and-so something right. or other, you, it's just in the, yeah. Now, often there's more things associated with a site plan review that written than things that need to be formally saved by the town clerk. So we have more extensive records in our shared drive about individual properties and site reviews. But of all the, you know, everything in a in a public meeting is posted publicly, and and then and documents for the record are transferred to the town clerk. Super. I like that idea. You're going to be sorry you said no. See. Anyway, <laughs> I do it mostly because it makes my life easier. I got so tired early on on the planning board of like various drafts Search. and minutes and agendas were flying around an email. We wasted so much time in meetings like what, which email, what date, you know, I hate that. Yeah, me too. Are we I had to do it with myself over the last two weeks. Like, right. How do I do a meeting again? Where are the minutes? Right. I didn't take the minutes. Crap. I'm just going to leave it. I'm dealing with it like that. So it, yeah, no, that would make things really easy. I appreciate it. Are we sure on membership? Um, I believe, Fred, that the housing committee membership base is great. Um, although I think we have room for seven members but like the trust is a different issue and so um i think i'll have to have a conversation with brian or fred about the other fred about that over the next month and we'll we can talk about that next yeah. time um but yeah i actually and and i think any in interested housing committee 
potential new housing committee members would be welcome if there are people who have energy around projects. I, I could talk to you about that more, Fred, if you have someone in mind. I actually have someone in mind at the moment too, if I can rope them into coming, um, we'll see. All right. Heather, before we, I don't know if you're running to adjourn, I just wanna put, I know you mentioned the master plan, comprehensive plan. Right, yes. Um, can I put a plug in for that? Yes, go ahead, Megan. Okay, so um, the town has received some grant funding. Uh, Sylvia's gonna be the lead on, on that part, but they've hired the COG to do um, a visioning over the next year for comprehensive plans, to determine what it is the town wants and needs on a variety of topics like land use, housing, economic development, transportation, community facilities, uh, to create the goal the year after a comprehensive plan or master plan for the town. So right now we're about to embark on that visioning process um, and we are gonna be forming a steering group advisory committee we need representatives from a lot of the different, from housing committees, from concoms and planning boards to help us with that. Um, we are probably all gonna meet about four to five times over the course of this next year total, but we need help and input on how to reach out to residents in the town to do surveys, to get um, to, to, we're gonna have probably two workshops, maybe um, public workshops to get people's ideas. We need your help to decide how, what the format's gonna be. Is it virtual, in person? What works well for the town? Um, when would it be? When's the best time? So you're gonna, whoever's on the steering advisory group is gonna help us steer us in the right direction to get lots and lots of input from the town on what your priorities are gonna be. Um, so please think about joining the steering advisory group. You can either ask me or Sylvie and let us know. Our first meeting is gonna be probably in September. Um, and we're also doing it the same time in conjunction with a digital equity plan to make sure all of your residents can be kind of a chapter of this plan to make sure all of the residents in Waitley have access to the internet and are able to use the internet. Um, so there's kind of a bunch of little components that are going into this, but the steering advisory group, base, their main mission is to help get input for um, from the town residents. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm going to do my best to join the steering committee and, and go to all the meetings. But I think um, last I talked to Sylvie, it looks like, you know, they're still sort of looking for representation, more town representation. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, Megan. I know, I'm glad you brought it up. Um, All right, anything else? Or now we're ready to adjourn. I'll entertain a motion. I'll do my first formal motion at the end of the meeting. And uh, move to adjourn. Thank you, Brant. Any second? Order. I'll second. There, good. All right. I'm just. Thank you all. Um, I'll do my best with uh, minutes tonight, and um, I will send something out with minutes, a Zoom link, and a draft for that meeting on September 6th at 6 30. Uh, before I leave on vacations. Um, it was nice to see you all again. Thank you for coming. You. Um, I'm excited we've got some real stuff to work on. Good night. 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 Good night.